you are in for a treat today. Today we are joined by James Hughes Jr., Jay Hughes. Um, and Jay, for those of you who don't know it, um, is probably the reason that I'm doing a lot of this. Uh, when I read his book, Family Wealth, Keeping It in the Family, it struck a chord with me and I had to reach out. And he was kind enough many, many, many years ago to uh, guide me through a journey. And uh, um, that introduced me to John A. Warnick and the Purposeful Planning Institute. And uh, so Jay, thank you for everything that you've done for myself and the community that you know is part of the Purposeful Planning Institute and uh, those serving families of wealth and you know, families of family businesses, welcome. Well, Michael, thank you. I am delighted this morning to be joining you and uh, whomever out there uh, decides to have a listen. And um, hopefully in the conversation, uh, some things will occur that will help human beings flourish. As you and I have said, that's why we exist. That's what we do, why we do what we do. And so this morning will be another opportunity or this afternoon wherever your time zone is, uh, hopefully to add to uh, that work. Perfect. So one of the things that we like to do when we kick off is, you know, this, this world of family wealth, the world of family business, um, you know, when you started your journey, there was, you know, very few, if any, university studies, or there wasn't tracks of information. There was lots of, you know, uh, how would you say, um, trial and error maybe. Um, and so, you know, what I, I like people to talk about just a, a three minute version of the journey of what, what brought you to working in this world. Uh, Michael, I'm 78 years old. So I'm getting uh, close to Andy Deluvian before the flood uh, in age and stage of life. Um, however, I am one of the few people, very few people, who were very privileged to be trained uh, in this work uh, by, in my case, lawyers uh, and also very senior bankers and others uh, back in the late 1960s. Now, why does that matter? Well, it matters because those men and some women, but mostly men at that time, had come into the professions banking, law, accounting, the other things that serve families, had come into the profession in the late 30s or when they returned from the Second World War. In turn, they had been trained by men, it were men at that time, who had come into the profession around 1900. Just think of the life of a professional and how many years it would be generationally the interesting thing is that the men who came into the profession around 1900 were the first people in America who had to deal with great fortunes created during the robber baron period in the post-Civil War. So they were the pioneers in this field. And they trained the men and women who trained me at the end of their careers. So I'm one of the last living people, I think, who comes from the tradition of having looked at the questions that families face with resources beyond their uh, normal spending needs uh, that really go back through the history of our country. And there were a few, I don't wanna extend this too much. Yes, there were a few fortunes before the Civil War, but not many. The Astors would be one of the very rare ones that uh, preceded the war, but essentially uh, that process of study and assistance to families who have basically the same issues uh, they would today. And then the other thing I would say to keep this short is that in that process of working with those men who trained me and women, I very quickly began to see that there were vintages of trusts, just like wine. And that each of those vintages, whether it was 1917, 1931, 35, people say, that old? Yeah, I was working as a young lawyer with trusts created with those vintages. And essentially, as the law evolved, uh, the fiscal laws evolved, uh, each of those periods had an event 
that affected the uh, wealth of those families. And so trusts came to life that are vintages, if you will. And that still occurs today. But again, having seen how families responded to those events, external events, and also these men's experience of how they responded to the internal events in their family is what they taught me. You know, we've, we've talked several times through the years and I've never heard you talk about the vintages of trust. And when you really start to look at it, I have seen exactly what you're talking about. And, and it might even be kind of like the wines where upstate New York version of trusts versus the Colorado or the California or the Delaware <laughs> trusts are right. different as well, just like the grapes in those areas. That's a that, really, that's a neat that, analogy. And that is exactly so. <laughs> no.